Hey guys, Jerry Mitchell like here. Smith & Wesson sent me one of their brand new Volunteer XV Pro modern sporting rifles. So what I'm gonna do with it, I've got all the accessories, I'm gonna turn it into one of my three gun competition rifles that you'll see me use at the range. So stick around guys, we've got a lot of pieces and parts and we're gonna make it happen. Okay guys, we're gonna take the new Smith & Wesson out of the box here. Give you an idea of what we have here. It's a uh, modern sporting rifle. It's chambered in 5.56, 223. Uh, one thing about multi-gun or three-gun competition, this is the minimum caliber that you can shoot. Uh, light recoil, relatively high capacity magazines, quick to change. Uh, the way it comes out of the box is ready to race. So we'll kind of give you an idea of the overall product from the end here going toward the muzzle. You notice the uh, the buttstock is adjustable for length of pull, which is really great if you're shooting in different positions or you have bulky clothing on. You can adjust this for proper eye relief to either the metallic sight or, of course, an optic. And going forward of that, you have a pistol grip, and it's well textured for grip enhancement. Also, it has an ambidextrous charge handler, which is really good. And you go into the trigger assembly, it has a flat face trigger. And that's something a lot of guys have gone to lately is a flat face trigger. It's, beginning, it's getting to be very popular. And it comes with a set of backup sights. Uh, they fold up and they fold out of the way. Kind of trick. Going forward of the receiver, it has a 15 inch handguard and it's an M lock handguard, which means it accepts all the M lock accessories. And that's what you find in competition. I'm constantly changing sling position, maybe where I'm going to put a bipod, maybe multiple bipods. So with a handguard like this, I can do that relatively easy. But another feature of a long handguard like this is that when I'm actually shooting in competition, when I'm shooting in an awkward position, an unknown position, odds are I'm going to rest on the handguard and not the muzzle. You see a lot of guys resting a gun on the end, their, their barrel on the end of a prop, and of course accuracy is out the window. So with something like this, it's relatively hard to do that. But it also gives you some enhancement on how you can hold it to control it better to make it more shootable. And of course on the front here, you have a muzzle brake uh, slash flash suppressor. And that's something we're going to change out because I'm going to shoot it in competition. I'm going to go strictly with the muzzle brake. So that's how the rifle comes out of the box, guys. Ready to go. Okay guys, what we're going to do, I'm going to change the pistol grip out. I'm accustomed to a little bit different angle than the one that comes on this rifle, but what you want to be aware of before you start any modifications on your firearm is to check the owner's manual to make sure you don't, you don't void the warranty. So we're going to be working on the outside of the gun here, and uh, we're going to change the pistol grip out real quick. This one uses an Allen key. Very easy to swap, and that's one thing great about these platforms like this. There's so many accessories out there that you can tune it or you can shoot it the way it comes out of the box. Either way, that's some of the fun of owning it. So when you go to take the pistol grip off, what you want to be aware of, there's a plunger here for the safety. This spring wants to really, really leave very quickly. So we're going to set it on the side. Uh, we're going to use the screw that comes with the new grip. What I'm looking for on this particular style of grip, it has a, con a compartment in the bottom. So when I finish my build, I'll have an Allen wrench that fits every part of the rifle and also a lens cloth stored in the pistol grip. So should I need it on the line to do anything on the gun, I'll have some pieces and parts there ready to, ready to go. So got the spring back in position and let's start it in this. Uh, yep. yep. And all right, we got the screw in place. We're gonna go ahead and torque it down. This one has a self-locking screw, so it doesn't take a lot of a lot of pressure to get it into, into position. And there it is. And what I like about it again, it has a captured feature here where you can put your parts in there or your lens cloth, and you're good to go. Pretty easy, pretty easy mod. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna change the buttstock out. Uh, there again, I'm looking for something a little bit lighter weight. Uh, it's very easy to change a buttstock on this on this particular one. Pull up on the lever, remove it, and to put the new one on. This is a mag pull. It's a slim one. I'm trying to save a little weight on the back of the gun, so I'm going to use all the weight for optics and other accessories. So you go ahead and depress the lever a little bit. You can see this plunger comes up. 
put an Allen key in it like this, put it in position. And what I like about this buttstock, there's two spring assemblies in the, in the buttstock itself. So when you lock it in position, it's very rigid and it's a little bit narrower on top. It fits my face a little bit better than what comes with the gun. We're going to go ahead and put an oversized magazine release on it. This is not a necessary thing, but I'm kind of spoiled to it. So what I'm going to do is show you how to do that. It's pretty easy. I just take an Allen key and I'll depress the button from the ejection port side. And you see that it uh, opens right up there. You can take the mag catch counterclockwise and release it and contain the spring assembly. You see the uh, there's a spring under the button assembly. So the button that I'm going to put in there has a couple of holes on the top where I can put an extension on it. And we're going to put it all back together right quick. This is an easy part to change. Like, like I said, I'm kind of spoiled to the, uh, to the oversize. Usually I'll run my magazine catch a little bit lighter than stock. I'm using it for a different application than you might. So uh, that's some of the fun of tuning it. All right, we're back assembled. And it's about like what I want to feel there on the, on the spring tension. You can adjust that spring tension by how many rotations you put on the bag catch itself. So on the front here, the extended the oversized part bolts right on to the button. A couple of cap screws and you'll be ready to go. What this allows the user is a broader uh, reach to the, to the mag button makes it a little bit faster but it can also make it more accidental so in my application i'm i'm knowing where the gun is all the time and how it's handled so i'm aware of the fact that it is an oversized button and it might be set a little bit lighter than stock yeah there you have it The next mod I'm going to do is put an ambidextrous bolt release on it. And what that allows you to do is to do keep your finger on the right side of the firearm here and, and release the bolt instead of coming around with your left hand. Uh, it saves a little time. When you do a lot of rifle drills, rifle only competition, a little bit of time matters. So to do this, to install that piece, I'm going to have to pull the upper off. So I have a chamber flag in it. And uh, of course, there's no round in the chamber, no ammunition on the table. I'm going to look anyway, make sure. And you can also use this tool as a push pin to work the push pins on the upper and lower assembly. Get it to... All right, we got that out of there. So, pretty easy install. This is your bolt release. And you come with the lever here, you'll see that it actually goes into the trigger guard. Kind of trick. And it takes only but one screw to attach it. And uh, this is kind of like a power window on your car. Once you have this, you're kind of spoiled to it. So I advise you uh, not to get one unless you want to buy more than one. All right. One little set screw here. Hold it on. There again, when you're doing a lot of gun handling quick loads, uh, every little second actually means something. And this little device here can buy you some time. As you can see, it's a very... Very easy install. Give you an idea what it looks like. Oh, very nice. Power window, brother. There you have it. Power window on your modern sporting rifle. <laughs> what we're going to do next, guys, we're going to mount a piece of Picatinny rail to this M-Lock handguard. This actually comes with the rifle, and usually in my range bag, I'll have several pieces of this. And in my division, I can put more than one bipod. Sometimes you actually put two or three on the gun at one time, which makes uh, this mounting very uh, easy to do. So on this M-Lock handguard, all you have to do is line it up. You see these little guides in the back, on the bottom of the Picatinny rail? You put it in a location that you might deem necessary. I know when I shoot my uh, bipod, I'll usually mount it right here. And I also have uh, slings that will fit this also. So it kind of gives you some flexible options there on where to mount your sling. So on my bipod installation, I would do a, about to this position. And that's what's great about this M-Lock handguard. It's that easy to put a piece of Picatinny rail or an accessory anywhere on that 15-inch handguard. Pretty cool. 
Okay, the next bit of kit we're going to cover is an M-Lock QD sling mount. So, I have this Magpul accessory. They make several of these. I like the really small one right here that I have. And I'm, I know where I'm going to put it on the handguard. And that's what's really nice about a 15-inch M-Lock handguard. You can mount your sling in different positions. And it allows you a lot of flexibility on what sling that you're actually going to use. So, all right. Let's go ahead and put it in in the handguard here and get it all lined up like we want and uh, twist the Allen key here it should should lock it there we go and one more and we're good we'll take a visual on it to make sure everything's lined up yep it's in the correct position so we have a QD mount in the, in the rear made into the buttstock and one in the front so I have my trusty sling here to give you an idea what it might look like and one thing about multi-gun sometimes you have to start with the rifle with the sling in position so this gives you that flexibility of having that ready to go and let's go ahead and attach it to the rear and all right so we have the sling mounted and it's, it's ready to go the next option we're going to install on this msr is a muzzle brake so what i did off camera the way this attachment is it's it's affixed with a crush washer so it takes a little bit of torque so i had to do it in a vice assembly to make that happen and uh i had to do that off camera but what i have for you to, to put on is the is the jm the mitchell arc muzzle brake two piece has a locking nut usually what i do when i install them for my own personal use i'll put a little anti-seize or some kind of a heavy grease on the threads because it's usually going to stay there for the life of the barrel and uh, it's very easy to put on and the whole idea behind this this helps take some of the recoil out of the gun when i shoot it and it makes it easier to stay on target and i can see my hits and my misses quicker so i have it timed and one thing about this muzzle brake it has a little bit of a downward thrust so if i'm a right-handed guy and I was going to use it, I put it about the 1 o'clock position. If I was lefty, I would put it in about the 11 o'clock position. Or you can run it straight up and down. Uh, that's one, th one thing fun about having all these pieces in, uh, to use, is that you can set it up exactly for your individual needs. So what I do, I'll have it, I'll have it mounted something like this. I'll hold it back with this brass rod. And uh, when I tighten it, I would probably do it in a fixture. And I would affix it with about a 30 foot pounds of torque, and it would be locked in that position, and it would be ready to go. And the next thing we're going to do, guys, we're going to install the optics. I'm in open division, so I can have a I can have a telescopic sight, and I can have a red dot. I can put them anywhere on the gun. I can hang as many optics on the gun as I possibly could could use. So I've settled on two. So the way the the rifle comes, of course, it comes with these. With the metallic sights and i'm not going to use those uh, so i'm going to go ahead and, and remove them you can uh, remove them with either a uh an allen key or a screwdriver so it's uh easily replaced and we're going to go with the optic of choice so what i run is a one by six is a vortex razor uh, i have them on so many guns i know exactly where to mount it for my eye relief it falls to where the back of the Scope is pretty much on the back of the charge handle. It's it's going to be uh, It's going to be ready to roll right in that position there So one thing you want to remember when you when you mount an optic is before you tighten the base screws down You want to thrust it toward the muzzle There's going to be a recoil lug in the base and you want to thrust it toward the muzzle and I should also Say that I would recommend you have a torque wrench. This is a vortex torque wrench. There's a lot of them out there It's in inch pounds and uh, you can torque it to their recommendations per bount and without damaging your equipment. A lot of guys, when they work on optics, they get heavy fisted like they're changing a truck tire. And it's not really that, it's an optic. So we got it forward. And I have this wrench set at about 35 inch pounds. So I've got the, the lug engaged forward. And I'm going to go through them just like you would tightening anything in sequence. Uh, I'm going to start in the back here bring it to a click move it up to the front click it once here and this allows you to tighten it right to spec and not damage the equipment by over torquing it then i'll come back and check 
you test each one again. All right. So there you have it, scopes mounted, ready to go. The final accessory for this setup is gonna be a red dot. There again, I'm open so I can have more than one optic. And for really close work, I like a red dot. And uh, this is a really trick mount. A company by the name of Valhalla Tactical sent me this last year and I'm really liking it. It's super rugged, it appears to be all stainless steel. But what I like about it, it's uh, infinitely adjustable on the pitch of the red dot and you, it comes with several different bases so you can fit a, a wide variety of red dot sights to it and it comes with two really strong mounting screws and as you can see it's on a pivot all right guys there it is that's the way i like my equipment set up from buttstock all the way to the muzzle and it's ready to compete so stick around guys we got a lot of other good gunsmith videos Get some.